Welcome to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. How do you respond to the translation, otherwise known as the death, of a loved one? What are the oldest reports of paranormal events? Are there ghosts who are good deed doers? Hello and welcome to the 887th edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno coming to you from WOON AM and FM Radio in Woonsocket, Rhode Island on the Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live and on TuneIn.com. I'm Ben and those assorted questions came from my co-host, partner in Paranormal Adventures and dad, Paul. Today we bring you a or an open line show with correct grammar with our favorite <laughs> guest co-host uh, and if you'd like to join us on the air you can give us a call 401-766-1240 that's from anywhere in the multiverse or you can email paul at behindtheparanormal.com so Shane Searway as our as our, our our favorite guest co-host welcome back to behind the paranormal hey good talking to you guys again it's been a little while yeah, well, hey, you know, life happens, and and everyone has things going on, I, I suppose. Well, we had things come up last month, and we had to uh, put a, a guest in a slot of the open line show we had planned. But next month, uh, in April, we have two open line shows, so we should maybe make up the difference that way. Uh, okay, um, on the email uh, comment just now, uh, for some reason on my phone, which is what we rely on when we're here at the studio, uh, it has not been receiving emails, I don't think. Uh uh, so, well, fortunately, try your luck or call. Uh, that's the best thing. Well, that and we have a myriad of also pre, well, people have emailed stuff in prior to as oh, well. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yes. That's always a good idea. Okay, now this one I kind of moved to the front because uh, it's important and it's uh, something that a lot of people face and, and we wanted to get to this question from April. And uh, she she names herself an anxious widow, and uh, I don't know where she's from. However, we'd like to address her issue. Well, I guess uh, we can we can hop right into it then. Uh, so April writes to us: uh, My husband of thirty years uh, has crossed over cancer. I'm afraid, uh, or I'm scared half to death. I'll never see him again. Do you have any advice? Okay, nice and nice and brief. Thank you, April. However, uh, a very poignant and important question. I, I don't know. You fellows want to uh, start with this, Shane, Ben? Well, uh, Shane's audio is now. Uh, no, he's, he's just he's 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 adjusting. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Good. Don't scare us like that. <laughs> so, do you want to uh, start with April's question? Yeah, I was thinking uh, that's a good one for you. To, to lead off, I think. Okay, well, that's that's uh, as subtle as a tongue. Well, I, I think you have the best bedside <laughs> manner. All right, okay. All right. Um, you, we, as you know, when we address ultimate questions of this kind, we always take a very different point of view than what you would usually hear. Ordinarily, the approach, and uh, maybe it's correct. I, I don't think it is, but who knows? Uh, is that you? You. you lose a loved one, loved one dies, you don't see them anymore, uh, and uh, you try to move on and you deal with your grief, uh, but you always hope, uh, <clears throat> according to the common beliefs, that you will see the person again once you die, okay? Um, I, I, don't, I don't believe it that way. I think it is far more interesting, far more glorious, I think, in many ways th- than that. Uh, because we will cast things in terms that we ourselves can understand. Uh, and our, the paradigm from which we understand things is way, way too narrow. Our whole understanding of ourselves, of God, of, of, of everything, I think, is, is just not good enough. So here's the point of view that we take, and you can take it or leave it. Um, as a matter of fact, this came up in 2011, uh, almost 10 years ago now. It'll be 10 years ago next month. When uh, my mother translated, Ben's grandmother, mm. and we were all very close. Uh, she moved here uh, to Rhode Island from Connecticut when uh, about 10 years before that, and you know, we, we were very close, saw her a lot. And the thing was that um, when she translated, a lot of people wrote in, because you know, we, we would give advice like this and address questions like this for, for many years on the show, and people say, okay, well, uh, you know, you're telling us, how do you deal with the loss of a loved one? And it's a good question. We don't believe anybody's lost. We don't even believe in death. We don't even believe in death for the body. 
That's a really strange concept, but that's the way we approach it. Because, why? Because we live in a creation that is a multiple upon multiple upon multiple realities. With many versions of ours, we call them facets in, in, in the vocabulary we actually had to invent just to talk about this stuff. And how can you die, which is cease living in every way, if you have this um, the, the constant versions of yourselves and, and, and uh, all sorts of uh, physical existences in all parts of the multiverse, as it's called, uh, here, there, and everywhere, every when as well. Uh, you can't. Well, the thing with the multiverse is that everything is possible, really, except death, because of, of the, the nature of that kind of creation. So what does that mean? Essentially, it means that just because the person has translated, uh, it's an ancient, ancient term for death, as opposed and died here in, in this, this very narrow little corner of, of the multiverse that you and I can see and that we experience, doesn't mean they're not still continuing in many, many, many existences in which they never died. This is apparently a literal concrete reality this is not a metaphor this is actually as real as it gets if these theories are correct and and and, and the quantum mechanics is being used in all sorts of practical applications or it must be true in some way but that's the way we believe it so when it comes to my mother and april to your husband uh it's not that they are like still with us somehow here but that we are with them in many worlds many realities in which they never died Personally, my relationship with my mother, since she translated here, is better than it's ever been. Uh, in dreams, in um, and there are a number of parts of my spirituality involved being aware of other worlds in which uh, different facets of us exist, and uh, it's just there's a reality to her, to our presence with her, as opposed to just her presence with us in one world. Uh, and, and that that's how we uh, how we pretty much approach it. Will you meet your husband again? You don't need to meet him again. You're already w- you're already with him in absolute concrete ways in many parallel realities. Now the trouble with, with that point of view is that our society is just too narrow. Although although that that seems to be changing, a transpersonal psychology and and uh, bigger awareness of quantum mechanics seems to make that. Uh, more of a, of a palatable reality to many people in society today. And uh, I think anyone who has, quote, lost a loved one should, uh, should embrace that. I think it is, a, it is a, an absolutely wonderful, marvelous point of view that, that we believe is absolutely real. It's more real than, than anything else in life. Uh, so th- that sort of unity, and we talk about unity with a capital U, uh, that's part of that, is, is that you uh, are with him in many, many parallel realities. And that, that's a normal, everyday thing. There's nothing special you have to do uh, to, to be part of that. Just quiet your heart, quiet your mind, quiet your soul, and you'll be aware of it in a very, very healthy and wonderful way, I think. So that's what I have to say about it. You fellas? Yeah, I was going to say, and it kind of goes on with what, what you are just describing was as important to, you know, maintain that relationship as you did when he was alive, um, to, to feel it that way and sit because you are connected in, in the same way as he was when he was alive. So if you approach it that way, it's, it's, um, it's very important because you'll keep that, that connection, uh, that frequency going as it was when he was alive. But what I've found is the mistake a lot of people make, and um, I've had to help so many people over the years, where this has brought on a a parasite um, because people now approach that relationship differently and they will reach out to their loved one um, in the spirit world. And that's how they, they, so their whole um, approach, their whole, uh, how they, how they direct themselves towards that that loved one um, that has passed away is now different. It's not like they're they're um, interacting with somebody that's alive standing next to them. So the way they um, just them all together, it's like when you're talking to somebody on a Ouija board. You know, your grandmother that passed away on a Ouija board. You're reaching into the spirit world, and you have that mindset. 
And what happens is you send the wrong message, and a lot of people have gotten in trouble that way. So maintain that relationship as it were when he was alive, um, and you will always be connected with him. Yeah, Ben? Uh, well. I think she made an important point there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's, you know, I, I, it's a, I like, I like everything that's said, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hone in on on Shane's Shane's point, which is you know the human emotion is is a complex and and annoying thing that we all kind of have to grapple with, unfortunately, and it's really easy to to look for a reason or to try and and somehow intellectualize you know someone's passing or blaming yourself or guilt or it, it just you know, if, if you don't if you don't deal with things correctly, um, it can be, you know, or, well, I guess not in a correct way. Deal deal with things in a human manner, right? You know, and and kind of em, embracing the pain. I guess you don't you you leave yourself open to some real real bad things. You know, it's like um, you know, regret is a is a horrible thing that eats at you forever if you if you have it, and and really to make peace with yourself and with your loved one right and i think one of the things that's really um kind of stuck with western society as a whole and into the modern world i would argue that death is not dealt with in a healthy manner um no. at all uh in, in any way shape or form and i'm i'm guilty of it too right and you know we all are because we're human and we make mistakes and that's just kind of how it is and i think one of the things to to really to really look at is that we can't we can't do things ourselves right you know we have if if you if you don't have family you have friends you have some sort of support system that's that's super helpful and part of that support system is your is your translated loved one right that relationship doesn't end it continues forever and ever and it just it does it doesn't end it just continues and changes like every other relationship right if it's profitable, it grows, changes, and and expands, and hopefully improves over time. And that's something to kind of keep in mind: is you know you can't do things by yourself as much as we we like to think to, and as much as it's enforced by our incredibly individualistic society that, oh yeah, we're you could do everything yourself. You're capable. You're you're X, Y, and Z. It's you know we we can't. You know you you can try and lift up. A, a car, but you know you can't do it yourself. You need somebody else to help you, right? And and that's why humans need people. We need support because that's what we need, especially even in translation. Well, just uh, before we leave the subject, uh, to, to build on something Shane said, I would avoid uh, like the plague, uh, Ouija boards, seances, anything like that. Uh, even mediums, and there there are many good ones there. But uh, I think a lot of them do not understand what they're touching, what they're dealing with in a full manner, uh, with respect to people. And I would say just uh, try and um, and get that uh, uh, relationship going, as Shane suggested, and avoid any of the sledgehammer techniques uh, that you don't need, okay, uh, to deal with any one of this uh, in, in any way. So in any case, uh, we're going to move on. And uh, we are going to deal at this point, I think uh, our caller has come in, with a very interesting case in uh, California. And uh, we're also expecting our uh, our good um, cousin, Rick Eno. Uh, how many Enos can there be, right? Uh, calling in from Northern California, where here's the, uh, the reporter for that area for our show. And as always, has some interesting cases. So uh, who, who's that on the phone? Uh, that is Rick. It is Rick. Aha. My psychic powers are what they should be today. Ah, I did something fancy. It works, I think. Good. All right. Rick, welcome back. Good morning. I should say good afternoon to you. It's good morning, Eric. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, it's the afternoon here. Okay, well, well while we're waiting uh, for, an issue, uh, for a matter on that, uh, that new case, uh, we have a question uh, from um, Peter uh, in mm-hmm. Bogota, who is uh, our good um, friend there. And we'll take the second part of his question. For actually, no, let, let's is it right there on the bottom, Ben. Oh, sure. Okay, thing. and we'll start with the. Uh, so we'll start with the whole the whole shebang. Yeah, we'll start with Peter, Peter's question at the bottom, and we'll we'll move. To, there are two questions. Sure thing. And then uh, when um, Christina calls in, we'll we'll take that. Okay. Uh, can Rick bring us up to date on any new cases or on any new case news that he has? 
Well, that's what Christina is yeah. going to do. I guess. But Rick, go ahead. That's your question. Okay. Um, well, why don't I talk about the, the case quickly and uh, the astrological case in, uh, on, uh, in California, and then get into some of the particulars what she calls. So this is Grass Valley, California. Yeah. It is December. Could you, could you make sure you're speaking right into the phone, please? Sure. Is, yeah. is this better? Yes. Is this better? Okay. So Gra- uh, Grass Valley, California, December 21st. Um, that's the night that uh, Saturn and Jupiter were going to align by two degrees. So you have a lot of um, people out in their backyard stargazing. And in Grass Valley, it's a completely clear sky. There's no light pollution. There's It's just an open sky. It's like the best possible scenario if you're going to go do stargazing. Anyways, there is a... Uh, a woman reporter named it's Christina um, that while they were out in the, uh, on their back deck looking southwest 90 degrees up into the sky um, they noticed in their uh, naked eye they could see some some planets in the distance now I'm not going to identify if it was Jupiter or Saturn um, because I, I can't really say that but what I can say is what she saw was as the planets were sort of near each other from the um, uh, bottom of the view, which would be beneath sort of the planet looking up, she saw an orb traveling towards this planet. And she got a picture of it. And as it traversed towards the planet, it suddenly made a a turn, a 90-degree turn to the left, and accelerated instantaneously, leaving a, a green light trail behind it. So when you say it was heading towards the planet, you mean Earth, like the pretty blue one? Uh, not towards Earth, no. These were planets in the distance. So you're oh, look okay. about this way. Yeah, these are planets. So this is all distance. However, the I, it's impossible to judge how far the object or the orb was away because there's no reference point per se except for the, the planets, which are light years away. So this is very far away. Um, but what was... What's interesting about it is she did catch it on on a digital uh, image. Now, in the digital image, she did say uh, the green is not there, eh, but but the trail behind the object is there. So you can see something, and it and it's headed, uh, it's changed direction. Obviously, now it's a still photo, so there's no video, but um, it was really interesting. But what, what's more interesting about this case is there was a couple of other. Uh, reports on uh, New Fork, um, and one actually on the MUFON site, that reported a similar object, not totally, and somewhere at closer distance, um, within the time frame. One was on the 21st, and I believe the other was on the 25th. So something was going on in the universe uh, during that period uh, of, the, of, the, of the planets sort of coming into two degrees with each uh, alignment with each other. What's really fascinating about the case, though, is as I was talking to her, and she'll be along shortly, um, is what I discovered, uh, and we'll, we'll save that for when she gets on, about shadow people um, that she reported uh, seeing in her, in her yard. Now, I'm going to hold off a bit just till she gets on, um, but in the meantime, uh, that's what's the most recent case that I discussed uh, here for Peter. I hope that feeds his, his, his mind. Um, and I am working on a couple others, but I'm not ready to present them yet, but I will at a, at a coming show. Okay, very good. Uh, and there's another question uh, pretty much for you from Peter. Sure thing. So Peter says, oh, did I hand it back to you? I might have um, handed it back to you. No. Oh, maybe, maybe I didn't hand it back to you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, on the previous page. Oh, no, I did hand it back oh, to you. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Okay. There we go. Now it's... <laughs> I'm Too many people up there, Ben. Yeah, you know it's it is it is what it is. You know this is live radio, everybody. How many he knows, right? Yeah, right. Yes, <laughs> you're gonna watch out for them. <laughs> Apparently, more than three. Uh, so Peter continues to ask. Uh, on a previous show, Rick said something to the effect of uh, that one thing Hollywood gets wrong when depicting the paranormal is always giving it a negative or evil character. That suggests, uh, or that's su- yeah, that suggests the question. Uh, are are there examples of ghosts doing good deeds? So, um, not I do have some examples. Uh, not my wheelhouse, and I, I, I encourage everyone on the show who, uh, which I know you, uh, uh, Paul and Shane are 
always doing this, but I'll give you the two examples I have. One is uh, secondhand. While I was at, at university, uh, there is a, uh, a student, a fellow student who lived in Ohio, and uh, they were Navajo, and um, they lived in this old sort of uh, home um, that was ranch land and then Lord knows what before that. But they reported having what they call uh, a whiskey man, and the whiskey man would um, rock the rocking chairs, um, close the doors when they left them open, um, and just have a general presence or sometimes even a, a, a scent in the house. Now, what they're doing good is, yeah, they're shutting the door, but it was known as a very peaceful experience um, in terms of having a, something occupy your home and rock in your chair. Um, no one ever felt scared by it, which I thought was interesting. So as I did some research, um, here in California, in Marysville, there is... Uh, it's actually published in a book, Haunted Houses of Wandering Ghosts in California. Um, there is a woman named Anita Lane. She owns a home in Marysville. Uh, the home was built in 1885, and she has um, many, many uh, ghosts or maybe crossover events happening within her home. Um, she woke up the first time finding that um, there was a party in her house, and her husband and her got up, and they could hear the noises and laughter. They went up to the main room, and no one was there. And that sort of kicked it off. And then through the years, they've identified um, other um, ghosts, if you will, in the home, um, one being the family of the Rideouts, who is a husband and wife and a, a daughter and a son. Uh, another is a gardener who is in the basement. So these 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 uh, ghosts take on different levels of the house. And um, and then there's other random characters. And she refers to them as her friend and that they actually help her in her daily life. And if they don't show up for a few days, she'll call out to them and they'll come. So while this isn't a, a, a case that I can say they're, you know, uh, doing the work of, of uh, charity and, and so forth, they're, they're, they're very, they seem to be very friendly. And they seem to be helpful to this woman, Anita Laney, and she went public with it. She's not ashamed of the book. Um, I, I think the book came out around 2006. I'm not positively sure. I'd have to look that up. But I know the newspaper article did in the Sacramento Bee. So that's that's an example of you've got you've got these. They're not doing anything evil. They're not hurting anyone. Anyone who enters the home doesn't feel uneasy. They feel fine. They some witness the events. Some don't. Um, but there's an example, two examples that I have where ghosts kind of um, um, just hang out and have a good time and are, are helpful at times to the people that uh, they're occupying that space with. Well, I want to get Shane in on this, but just before that, uh, you, uh, you know how I am with terms. Okay, What do you mean yeah. by a ghost? Everybody says, aha, dead people. Well, there could be a thousand other, I don't even believe in dead people, a thousand other right. possibilities for what could be going on. So Shane, uh, you want to get in on this? Yeah, um, I've told this story before on the show, but I, I like it because it it paints the right picture, But especially with what we're talking about. But there was a house that I did many, many years ago where they had the helpful ghost, they, they called it, and um, it would do the same thing. It would close doors. They'd walk up to their door. It would open for them. Uh, there was one time they forgot their keys. The door was locked. They couldn't get in, and they're like, oh, and they just kind of took a couple steps back. They heard the door unlocked, opened up. They, they were able to go in, um, but it was when their daughter fell out of a tree and broke her leg, um, and her mother didn't hear hear that she was hurt. She was doing the, the the wash and the washer dryer were going, and she turned around and her daughter was sitting on on her butt with her kind of her knees up. She was holding one of her legs and crying. She was in the doorway with her back up against the door frame, and you know, well, what happened? What happened? Mom says, and oh, I fell out of the tree. I hurt my leg and. Uh, the nice lady brought me in, but there was no lady. They lived on, on the end of this road. There was nobody around. Mother looked for the lady. There was nobody, no trace. Um, but but certainly, you know that that was a home that um, seemed to be had, have a helpful presence until the next family moved in, which was a dysfunctional family, and it was a whole different story. Now now this whatever was there changed. Uh, you know that came, was coming through. Um, reacting to the dysfunction, which they brought in a parasite, and this house was just totally obnoxious. I mean, it was horrible, but but certainly. And then in, in my work too, I've encountered, um, and then this might, 
you know, whether it's cases I'm doing or just my own spiritual development, um, I have encountered, um, you know, entities, if you will, um, like, like, you know, like, like you said, Paul, you know, um, not so much dead people as people think, um, but entities that, that have been very helpful towards, towards me. Yeah. Uh, Ben, some thoughts on that? Well, I, I think we're all neglecting to to remember Casper, the friendly ghost. Oh well, there's so the old guy. I, 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 we've had him on the show before. Yes. Well, no, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I just I just want to point that out as as just sort of a funny joke that not all Hollywood depictions are bad. That's but also I I do I do tend to I you know. Uh, I don't provide any dissenting opinion if that yeah. if that's if that says anything. I I would say that um it is it, it is it does not behoove us to trust everything we hear in daily life. Um and it also does not behoove us to 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 consider everything we hear from ghosts to be true too. Um, you know, just as we we distrust uh, the talking heads in the news, we must distrust <laughs> the talking heads that are under our bed. It is, <laughs> yes. it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of like you can't you can't have a double standard of existing where you're like, oh man, you know, like <laughs> I'm trying to think of an example. Um, you know, astrology's dumb, but you know, this ghost that I'm talking to through the Ouija board has got me pinned down, knows exactly what's going on. It's it's just it's one of those things where you know you got you got to be discerning with what you believe in and why you believe it. Yeah. You know it's always it's always a good practice to just distrust everything you hear in the first place. You know in general, right? Mm-hmm. You know if somebody comes up to you and says, "Oh, they found a cure for cancer," and it's like, "Okay, where's the research?" You know if a ghost comes up to you and says that, and you say, "Oh, sick, cool, what is it?" It's like, yeah. like you know, it, <laughs> we can't have double standards, right? We can't live two separate lives. We have to we have to approach everything the same way, right? You know, we have to approach everything with skepticism because otherwise you, you fall into really bad traps, you get hurt, other people in your life get hurt, and it's it's just it's real it's real bad all around. Um, you know, I think Hollywood if if you're looking if you're looking for an example of of something to be correct, Hollywood is the worst place to go for that um, because you're never going to get a straight answer. And you're always going to be disappointed uh, because if there's one thing that that media and mediums do is that they present life in in a way that is um, you know not real. <laughs> well, yeah. And so that's that's just you know we we have to keep in mind is ev- even us who are in the field, right? It's not like we believe everything we hear. Yeah, sure, we have res- we have reservations, we have biases. Everybody does. That's just the human condition. It's just yeah we we're not we're not perfect, and if we could be wrong, and that's something that we have to be open to, you know maybe spirits are always right, maybe ghosts are always right, maybe there are dead people, but to the best of our knowledge, you know through everything we've we've researched and experienced, it just doesn't it just doesn't seem that way, right? Right. Uh, just to introduce a little bit of lighthearted uh, comment here. Uh, when I was writing the introduction to this script and putting the, the questions we traditionally open the show with, I was saying, what do you call ghosts who do good deeds? So uh, immediately that line from The Wizard of Oz popped up after The Wizard's uh, true identity has been revealed. And he says, uh, there are men who are called uh, phile- 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 uh, good deed doers. Right? <laughs> so they all call them good deed doers. So philanthropic ghosts, I can mm. pronounce it. Yes. So there we are. So let's take our bottom of the hour break here. Uh, Rick, why don't you stick with us just in case Christina does uh, make an appearance. Uh, are you still? Okay. Uh, anyway, you're listening to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno and Shane Searway and Rick Eno on WOON 1240 AM and 99.5 FM in New England's very pretty and comfortable Blackstone Valley today. And we'll be right back, continuing our open line show with all sorts of questions from you. So stick with us. The night is alive. Join us and take a walk on the weird side when you tune in to The Kingdom of Nye, hosted by Heather Wade, the finest in late night talk. Listen live free weeknights starting at 9 p.m. Pacific time at thekingdomofnye.com, talkstreamlive.com, and the Paranormal Radio app. 
Want to take a ride? Local and live at 99.5 FM. Welcome back to Behind the Paranormal on WON Radio. And we are coming back with our great open line show today, our terrific guest co-host, Shane Searway, and uh, our visiting uh, Northern California reporter, Rick Eno, uh, waiting for a call in to talk about a new case there. Uh, in the meantime, however, uh, Ben, why don't we go to uh, Charlie in Willow Creek, Oregon? Oh, yeah, this, this isn't the first time we've heard from Charlie over yeah, Charlie's here. a very faithful questioner. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, Charlie writes to us, uh, greetings, Paul, Ben, and Shane, and I'll, I'll put in, in little, little parentheses there. Rick, uh, have you ever addressed the subject of Father Arenti's, uh, chrono visor? Oh, gosh. And what do you, what do you know about it? Oh, please tell all. <laughs> well, alright, I, I, I might, <clears throat> I have the one or two minor Vatican connections, so, uh, maybe I could address that. Uh, is anybody else, uh, even, um, familiar with that? No, I don't know about the time visor. All right, well, the Corona visor, yeah, it was there was this priest who supposedly had invented uh, working with people like Enrico Fermi and other very unlikely physicists uh, a, a a device to view past events. Supposedly, he not only could see, gee, Ben, put that anywhere, um, could see like the crucifixion of Christ. He photographed it supposedly. Now this gets on and on and weirder and weirder. And uh, I have looked into it, and this supposedly happened in like the '60s and early '70s. That sounds about right. I've never seen any evidence whatsoever that this is real. Now my contact at the Vatican, one of them worked in the secret archives, which there really is such a thing. And uh, I suppose you know, like he's going to tell me uh, about any of this, but he, that just didn't even. Ring. He said he heard of it, but he said it's complete nonsense. So supposedly, I mean, the 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 time theories I think are faulty. Uh, any physicist whom I know who's working on any kind of time work today would say, particularly what I'm thinking of, uh, you travel sideways in time. You don't travel backwards and forwards because the special theory of relativity, there really is no past or future, it's all simultaneous, which is one of the principles that we work on in the paranormal and uh, trying to apply as best we can the principles of quantum mechanics. So I have to say, Charlie, just uh, in short, I don't, I've never found any evidence that, that that's actually correct. And priests uh, usually have better things to do than building time machines. So that's all I have to say about it. And if, if anybody in the audience happens to have any further information on this, we'd love to hear about it. But uh, my information is that it's uh, complete uh, nonsense. <laughs> so I'm I'm just I'm I'm just thinking about all of the the potential issues that, that all the questions that that brings up. It, it's it's like you you you'd have to I, I feel like you'd have to physically go there. It, you wouldn't be able to put on a visor and just be there. It's not virtual reality. <laughs> like. Yeah, especially in that period of time, you know, in the 60s right. and, and 70s. and to take a photograph, right, it's, what, 16-millimeter film at the time? Yeah, well, well a lot of the uh, the information on this came from a newspaper article, and I wish I actually, no, I actually have uh Oh, do you actually have it? I think I did copy it. Yeah, here it is. Um, uh, this is, uh, and I don't know, you can hold it up, you really can't see it. Uh, this was um, an Italian a newspaper uh, that I can't see the date because it's too small, but it has an actual photograph. Oh yeah, there it is, huh? Which looks looks vaguely like the the common. Um, Let's see if I can I can. Nope. Depiction nope. of Christ. Nope. Oh. And it was that's a, a thing. and again Italian newspaper. There you go. Yeah. Ah, look at that! I didn't realize there was a camera there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we yeah, learn something every day in the hey, studio. That's, that's convenient. Now yeah. Everyone gets to so, see my paper. So, so uh, th- th- that's where the story pretty much came from. Was that newspaper article? And uh, I, again, uh, you know, I've looked into it, and I don't have any. But it's evidence. a single newspaper article, which yeah, is I mean, suspect already. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, I always tell our colleague, be very careful what you write. And Shane, you're working on a book, so be very careful what you write, because it it, it can get misinterpreted and carried down through history. Uh, as, as some sort of a myth, you know, just like the, the talking cat in uh, the uh, Bridgeport Poltergeist case and, and the, the, the book that the kid was blamed for having in Sanskrit, uh, there was actually a, uh, a cult book that was actually a book that belonged to me. It was a prayer book. Eh, old Church, Slavonic, Sanskrit, same thing. Yeah, so some uninformed um, 
you know, officer or somebody. Anyway, so so this is what happened. He can really get uh, magnified and carried down. So I don't believe it. Right, so, uh, well, that was a fun aside. Yes, so Charlie uh, has uh, she, another question. She does, and this one's a bit longer. Um, and she continues with, With all the phenomena occurring, uh, paranormal, paranormally speaking, um, it causes me to wonder if our grandparents and our great-grandparents and our great-greats ever experienced similar happenings. The paranormal has always been around. Uh, there's no such thing as linear time, so there oh. must have been Bigfoots, Mothman, Enormous, and never seen birds. Uh, there must have been hauntings and parasites and talking ghosts. Does anyone, uh, does anyone you know, do research into long past paranormal reports? Do they publish books about it? I know that there there exist multiple uh, cle- recollections of seances, mediums, ectoplasm, and all the rest. So I'm wondering about sightings of Bigfoot, Mothman, and uh, people who vanish into thin air. Uh, and would folks report such things to their friends, neighbors? Or would they be afraid because they'd be called crazy? Well, I don't know if anybody else wants to tackle that first. Uh, I mean, I could I could take a quick 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 jab at it. Um, well, I, I think it depends on what time period we're talking about, right? Um, you know, you got to You got we're we you know the seances and, and stuff like that that came from around the time spiritualism was a thing, um, right after the Enlightenment period. Prior to that, um, you know, we're 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 getting into you know. The Renaissance era thinking, which was, you know, heavily influenced by humanism, so it did, I don't think anybody really cared about it at that point in time. Prior to that, in Western Europe, you know, you had some really, really depressing outlooks on life, and I, I feel like in in Western literature, at least, you know, past um, you know the year one thousand, they, they stopped kind of caring about about certain things and one of them being you know i guess what we would call now paranormal events you know uh you have you have various interactions with religious figures over time in the what in western europe but in in you know eastern europe and the rest of the world um it seemed like s- things were kind of happening and it was a portion of the culture rather than something separated from it now with you know, moving, you know, back, you know, fast forwarding a wee bit into the Renaissance when humanism kind of became a thing. And it was like, you know, the everyday world was like, you know, this is great. You know, this is kind of the only alternative to like a hyper depressing outlook on the world. Right. That was re- reinforced at the time. So humanism was a logical, natural response that, you know, the natural world and all its beauty and X, Y, and Z are, are really great. So there was a lot of focus on the natural world and all of that. You can see it in the art. You can see it in the culture and, and all of that. But a lot less was put on anything mythological unless it had to do with reimagining of pagan myths, right? So, you know, you have, like, you know, the, the rediscovering of, of the classics and all of that, but a lot of it was just kind of like, oh, haha, the Olympians and all of that. But it was like, you know, no one took it seriously. So it really wasn't until, in my opinion, um, as a, as an amateur, not even an amateur historian, someone who likes history, it, it seems like right around the time of the quote unquote enlightenment, that's when things started focusing more on the unseen, if you will, and sort of these two very differing points of view kind of started to clash, which you have, you know, the scientific materialists and spiritualists. And those were kind of the two world views that were ultimately clashing with each other. And that's when you started getting more of what we see today. Unfortunately, a lot of our opinions are informed a lot by these two, <laughs> these two very different schools of thought. And they both kind of functioned together, but also against each other. And effectively, people of the time were thinking both as materialists and spiritualists. So it was like, okay, well, seances are accepted, but also with technological developments, you know, that's something too. And, you know, it was kind of like you, you delved into both worlds. And so with all of that, it's, th- in my opinion... The focus of the times was less on what we focus on now. And rather than kind of dissecting things and saying, ah, Bigfoot, Mothman, whatever, it it might have been different cultural terms, right? You know, like in in the Middle East, there was the jinn. That was that was one of one of like sort of the big things that was experienced, you know, in in the Middle East and still is to to the best of my knowledge. And and, you know, there was 
you know, you have these these cultures that popped up, you know, particularly the Byzantine culture that influenced a lot of the Mediterranean for a while, and there was some very, you know, they had a very serious cosmology, right, where it was a part of daily life that paranormal, paranormal, quote-unquote, things happened all the time, and that's just kind of life. But in the West, it developed differently, where it was something separate that you kind of dealt with on the side for fun, and that was about it. And it's still kind of that way in Western society today. And that's my little diatribe. Oh, okay. Uh, Rick, we haven't got much time left. Do you want to get off the line and find out if Christina has been uh, abducted by the Zubinal Janubians or something like that? Um, I did text her, and I haven't got a response. Um, I can cover what it is for now. We could, you could probably do it later if you want. Okay. Why, why don't we finish the conversation on this, and then we, we can uh, the hang on, we and, and then we'll do it just just very uh, very briefly. Um, I think that um, when you're talking about Charlie's question here about uh, you know the earlier ages, all you have to do is pick up a book from any period in history. Uh, or listen to, uh, say, in Africa or Australia, one of the people who the, the people who carry down the oral history of their people before there even was writing. Uh, pick up any ancient manuscript, particularly I'm thinking of Egypt in the 1300s BC with Amenhotep IV, the guy who had a UFO experience, if you ask me, mm. and changed the whole religion of Egypt to the worship of the sun disk. All right, you will find. All of human history, all of human thought shot through with paranormal experiences. Had there been no paranormal experiences, I don't think religion would have been founded. People thought they were talking to supernatural beings. Maybe they were. And uh, the same thing with science. Had there been no questions to be asked, uh, science uh, would not have um, evolved as it has today. Uh, So the paranormal really is the mother, uh, as I'm always saying, of religion and science. So I think that... um, it's everywhere. Uh, it's ubiquitous, and um, paranormal writers who write about it. I guess I suppose include myself and my, with my modest contributions to the field of the literature of the field, uh, turning home God, Ghost, and Human Destiny as a whole history of the paranormal in history, and that, that's kind of repeated in a, and, and uh, added to in uh, the most recent book, uh, Dancing Past the Graveyard. So, uh, Shane, thoughts on this? Before we get to Rick and his, uh, the case, yeah, no, I agree with both both everything you guys said. Um, and like the Jen, I mean, I, I think Jen is uh, the oldest description in literature um, of a parasite, I, I believe. So, I mean, I think mm. that goes way, 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 way back. And then, of course, you got drawings of aliens and from way, way back. And oh, yeah, and big, like the the natives will tell you, uh, Sasquatch is it, as far back as they can remember. You know, it's it, it's it's been a thing. So. Um, but there, but to touch on another part of what she had stated, saying you know where time is not what we think it is, and it's not a linear type of thing, and um, I think what she's saying, like why is there like an increase at certain periods of time too, with with um, some stuff like the paranormal, or whatever, and and like for instance, now I'm I'm getting this year I've been just hammered with all kinds of um, you know cases, things are just really really increasing, and there's a lot a lot of things going on, particularly like the parasites. Because of the state of the world, it's a, it's a the collective kind of like emotional state that a lot of people are in, and that's a perfect environment for these uh, these parasites. And so um, those you know certain emotional things that happen um, bring these things in. But there's also um, natural elements too that can really aid the process of of the crossover. But but these are things um, when we're when we have this um, a lot of turmoil, a lot of issues going on in the world. Um, it, it's like I said, it's a perf- perfect environment for these things to cross over from their parallel into ours or converge or whatever. But also just to come over here to feed, um, like Paul would put it, and um, and so that's what we see from time to time. And that we're in one of those um, stages right now. Hopefully not for, for too much longer, but yeah. Okay, uh, you know, Rick. Actually, I, I think thinking about this, um, it might be better to have Christina, the, the witness, on when we talk about this case. Yeah. And uh, I think perhaps um, since you, in particular, uh, will be uh, sitting in for for Shane. I don't know if either of you knows this yet. Uh, we have uh, <laughs> you know now. April eighteenth, uh, we have our next open line show, and uh, 
if you're uh, f- uh, sitting in for Shane that day, it's a perfect uh, opportunity for Christina to call in and discuss, discuss it then. Sure. Okay. Okay? All right. I'm Thank you so fine. much, cousin. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, cousin. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, there's a question I want to get to from Eric in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, right at the top there, Ben. Sure. Uh, so Eric writes to us, I was listening to your program in 2014 on synchronicity, and something I heard hit me pretty hard. I uh, hope it wasn't syncretic. Uh, what more can you tell me about people who experience synchronicity feeling like they don't belong here and don't fit in society, etc.? That's an important question. Uh, anybody want to take that? Start that. Start us off on that. You first, Shane. I feel like I've been starting off the whole time. Um. No, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, so I'm sorry. I got sidetracked for a second there. I'm, I apologize. Okay. Well. All right. Why don't I start? Uh, there, right. there we go. All, All right. right. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Uh, I often have the same feelings, and now, of course, the psychologist might point out that the feeling of detachment or feeling of alienation is a sign of uh, depression, uh, even chronic depression, but I think it's a lot more than that. I'm the least depressed guy you're ever going to meet. I look forward to getting up every morning, Uh, and I I have a feeling of uh, detachment. As a matter of fact, I cultivate it as a spiritual exercise, and many uh, people who are a lot more adept at spirituality than I am would suggest that you, you cultivate a sense of detachment. But there's more to the question, I think, than just attachment. It's uh, a, a, an issue of alienation uh, and feeling that you don't belong here. Uh, I've talked to people, too, who are perfectly normal, uh, positive people, wonderful folks, who feel that they're sort of on an alien planet. All right, um, Stanton Friedman, in deep conversation would often say things that he wouldn't say on the air. Okay, One of these things was that uh, he always had the suspicion that Earth might have been a penal colony, all right, uh, a place where, where you, if you were bad in your own civilization, that they would send you to uh, as a, almost a prisoner, okay? Uh, what are you staring at? Is there a, like a spider on my shoulder? No, I'm trying to read upside down the other questions. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and take it. <clears throat> but um, I, I think that there's um, uh, a real phenomenon there. I think that uh, the reason for it might be, if our theories are correct, that, that people are perhaps more in touch with other facets of themselves in worlds that are more familiar uh, or more um, amenable to our species than this one. You can, ver- you can really argue that th- our species doesn't really fit on this planet. Uh, we don't seem to fit in the normal uh, scheme of nature. We have to build complex houses and put clothing on ourselves in order to, su- order to survive, unless we live in the you know, tropics. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we're standing upright. Our stomach and, and, and vital parts are exposed, and that, that's not natural. We should be on all fours. So all these things make us wonder if somebody didn't mess with us. And, of course, in, if you watch Ancient Aliens, and there are many, you know, Vandanikan-type uh, approaches that, that may have some validity and may, may be completely true, that somebody messed with us uh, in at, at the point of our, our origins as a species. And it, and it just uh, made us feel <clears throat> that we, we kind of don't belong here. But I think, again, there's more to it than that. I think there are people who are more in touch with where they are in other uh, times, other places, uh, which are all simultaneous in existence uh, in the multiverse. Um, I myself have written about the good world, as Ben and I call it, and we kind of discovered this because we were both having experiences in it, both in dreams and in waking life, and at, at, at some points there, and, and maybe it's still happening, we don't talk about it lately, we don't have time, uh, <clears throat> that we would share dreams. I would start, and Ben would finish, you know, that we shared the same dreams. Uh, very often of the same place, uh, which is uh, it's not uh, heaven or any other place. I mean, it's but it does seem to be a world in which uh, there is um, uh, a great deal of um, conditions and laws of physics that are much more amenable to our species. It feels more like a natural home uh, sometimes th- th- than uh, our home here. Uh, but that's uh, <clears throat> that's a, that's in the epilogue of our 2016 book, Behind the Paranormal, Everything You Know Is Wrong. And I didn't put Ben's name on it because if the world is going to call him crazy, I didn't want that to happen, just me. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Well, although we did come out on Coast to Coast one time, and, and we said, should we talk about this and, and be a laughing stock in front of the whole country? And uh, we did, 
and we were not laughed at. Uh, thousands, literally thousands of people wrote and said that they had had experiences at the same place. They mentioned things and places in this good world that we had not mentioned and that never written about and that, that I recognized or that we recognized. So, uh, there you have it. So th- I think there's a very good reason why people uh, can at times feel alienated uh, or, or not to part of this world. It can be a very positive experience. It could mean you're, you're striving for something better. It means you are somewhere or somewhen better, I think. I don't think it's ent- anything wrong with it, entirely normal, as long as it doesn't mess up your life or anybody else's. It, it can improve your life, I think. So I don't know. Fellas. Well, I think that's a caveat there, right, is if, if uh, you know, if, if something – if you feel that something something negative is is coming of that sense, it's probably not a good thing. Right. Oh yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be positive. No, so no, that, that's, that's another that's issue. A, You're right. It, yeah, exactly. It, you know, you, you gotta you gotta be. We're we are intelligent beings sometimes, and we must be wary of 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 our thoughts. Yeah. And it's like you know you can get it's so easy to get sucked into your own head and and it's uh, not always healthy. <laughs> yeah. So it's if 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 you do have an experience that feels like that, right? You feel some sort of synchronicity, and it's like, wow, I don't feel like I'm a part of this. It's like, okay, cool, consider it, accept it, because somewhere, somewhere you are, some somewhere, somewhere else, someone else, right? You know, there there are times, and I'll give a little personal experience. Something syncretic will happen, and I will you know just be like. Oh, this is kind of weird. Like, you know, what am I doing here, right? You know, and and it's it's like it, it, and it's it's a real weird experience, right? And like, you know, you kind of have this weird moment where you're like, you're not quite sure who you are, what you're doing, what's going on, and then you kind of go back to life, and that's just what it is. And and you know, maybe it's early onset dementia. Who knows? But <laughs> well, there's a principle in throughout Christianity uh, that is often accepted, and that's a, that this is not our true home. Mm. That St. Paul writes about that. Now you can say what you want about St. Paul, but he does say that. Mm. And anybody who follows uh, any form of, of a more or less traditional Christianity, Eastern or Western, uh, has uh, uh, is may be familiar with, with the concept that this is not our true home. So, so it's present in spirituality. It's it's also present in other spiritualities as well. Um, I, I maybe to an extent in Judaism, uh, maybe to a lesser extent, but. Uh, there it is. So I mean, it, it is it is a legitimate philosophical point of view. So um, okay, why don't we move on to our uh, announcements here? Oh, geez, already huh? take us. Through. Yeah, time flies. I'll tell you. Alrighty, so let's just hop right into it over here. So uh, just when you thought it was safe to return to Maine, uh, we received dis- the disappointing word this week that the New England Parafest set for Kittery, uh, in the Kittery Community Center next month has been uh, ordered to be canceled by the town of Kittery uh, because of concerns that it's too early to let people assemble in the wake of the pandemic. Yeah, because we've been promoting that event for months. But well, I, I, think, I, feel, I think it was last week, too, where we were like, yeah, it's on. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, also, it's not the fault of the organizer, Tom Spitaleri, and I want to give a shout-out to him because he is one of the, yeah, the, the most guy. civic-minded people that we know and one, oh, of, yeah. one of just a wonderful, wonderful person. And uh, this event was uh, meant to uh, support uh, and help help support the uh, uh, Hill, the Hilldale Cemetery in uh, Haverhill, Massachusetts, of which Tom is the head of the board of trustees. And uh, I've been there; it's a lovely place, and a lot of historic graves. And it just it needs a lot of maintenance, and that that's what this uh, event was supposed to to help support. So mm. you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach him and see if we can put that in our list of charities on the show here. Oh yeah, better than nothing. So anyway. Uh, that event was supposed to take place April 10th and 11th, uh, and all three of us were scheduled to speak, and Shane too. Uh, we also planned to broadcast live from there in this time slot on the 11th, but we had to put off uh, that until next year's Parafest. Instead, we have scheduled a very interesting show with British poltergeist researcher John Fraser for April 11th. We'll be, we'll be promoting that. And so we are working on our new book, Behind the Paranormal 3, Uneasy Skies. Uh, also contributing will be uh, our colleagues Shane over here, uh, Alexander Petikoff, Valerie Lafaso, and the book will all, uh, also contain the best of our interviews uh, over the years with the greatest researchers in the UFO field, uh, as well as some of our own experiences. And you can look for the release of that book towards the end of this year. All right, Shane, what's going on with you? And we understand you'll be taking a brief, brief, I hope, hiatus from the show, but for a good cause. Yeah, yeah, just briefly. Um, yeah, it's for to kind of focus on my book. I have a 
whole new direction. It kind of hit me, and and I'm really excited about it. And as you can tell, my head's just totally spinning on that subject. That's why I've been a little distracted today. I apologize, but no, no, but, I uh, know. Believe me. <laughs> but but when it hit me, I was like, that that's exactly what I need to do. I'm I'm very very excited. I think it's going to help a lot of a lot of people in a lot of ways, not just with the paranormal, but in life. I know it will. Well, we're looking forward to that. And we just want people to know that it's not because you had enough of us, but, uh, you know, you got a very important project to work on, and we'll, we'll look forward to having you back as soon as possible. Uh, check out our current books, our current books anyway, along with those of our other co-hosts at our show website, BehindTheParanormal.com. And uh, you can find more about the show or many cases over the years and upwards of a 1,000 recorded shows and hours of shows at least. Uh, from our 12 plus years on the air, including our four and a half year run on CBS radio. Okay, uh, what do we got in, cook up in the freezer for next week, Ben? Cooking in the freezer? Wow, Cooking that sounds freezer. terrible. Um, you don't know our freezer. <laughs> that's, I think you need to get your freezer fixed. So, so next week, uh, March 28th, uh, we'll address the question of what is a medium? Uh, with our dear friend and empathic medium, uh, Valerie LaFasso. And Valerie is somebody you'll be hearing more about on the national stage soon enough. That's right. Uh, we'll uh, keep you posted on that one. Uh, we leave you today. Oh, we got like another minute. By we the got way. like another minute. Yeah, all right, no, I fine. Think you, I think you okay. think time well, changes. Well, I so want to thank uh, all those who wrote in today, especially our listeners from Australia. We, we were, had a lot of questions from Australia today we did not have a chance to get to. Uh, but again, uh, we will be having our... Um, Next uh, open line show on April 18th, not that far away, and we'll we'll uh, get those questions in the lineup for that. So anyway, uh, we leave you today with a beautiful thought from that 13th century thinker of beautiful thoughts, the philosopher and theologian and poet Rumi. What you seek is seeking you. Of course, not, when I when I wrote that, now because in the context of the paranormal, that's not necessarily reassuring. No, probably not. But anyway, <laughs> you get the the idea. Anyway, I'm Paul Eno, and I'm Ben Eno. And I'm Shane Sarway. Thanks for joining us on our great cosmic journey, and we'll see you next time on Behind the Paranormal. Return to this radio frequency 167 hours from now for another edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno.